now. Paul McGuire Grimes, KSTP, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Zach, it is really great talking to you today. I really love this new film. So congratulations on such a big accomplishment. I really saw these characters and the Serena are really brand new, beautiful light. So thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Now, what went through your head when you started seeing this kind of this fan movement start to happen to unleash the Snyder Cut? And what did that mean to you? Well, yeah, I mean, it was it was cool. And I, I thought that's nice. Um, I, I, I wasn't sure that it would, you know, actually end up as a, you know, as a movie. You know, frankly, I was like, OK, well, that's I mean, what what is the end game here? Like, are we, you know, but but the fans um, were amazingly persistent and they, uh, you know, they stuck to it. They kept tweeting the hashtag for years and, you know, here we are. And, uh, you know, God bless them and thank them because there'd be no movie without them. Was it hard to not dispel rumors as you saw things flying around? Yeah. I mean, you're always like, Oh God, do I, should I put my foot in this? And then I was like, Oh, well, you know what? I'm very particular about the things that bother me or don't bother me or that I'm interested in. And so I just kind of uh, use that as my compass. And I think it's more, it's worked out okay. Right. Now your life is very different now than it was when you first started working on this. Now, when, even though you went back to finish the film that you started, how do you think this cut is different now than it would have been, even if it would have been released back in 2017? Yeah, no, it's a completely different uh, set of parameters, a set of uh, the rules are different. So yeah, I don't, I have no idea what would have happened to that movie um, in 2017, even if they had said like, yeah, yeah, we love it. Just make it into a movie that we can release, um, you know, which is kind of like what you think the process would be. But um, this movie is literally, uh, you know, what, used to be considered un you can't release this movie it's too big mm -hmm. and i think that now with our streaming in the streaming world and thanks to hbo max for this amazing opportunity we get to um put up this four hours of justice league and i think it's a, it allows a very deep dive as they say well, I, I love that about it. I love that. I love the deep dive to learn more about who these characters are and their motivations. It brings such an emotional arc to it that was missing before. And you, you dedicate this film to your daughter. And I love the themes of fathers and their children's. And I want to be a father someday. And, you know, how do your kids inspire you every day? My kids inspire me every day by being, you know, the be a better version of myself. And I think that like, you know, you, when you look at your kids, you know, you look in some ways into a mirror, uh, but like a one way mirror, right? Because in a lot of ways you can't, you know, they're, they, 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 they all go into the future, you know, and you, your, your roads are inevitably like this. And so I just look to my children with awe and wonder. And I hope uh, that I, that they can get the smallest amount of inspiration from me because I get a massive in, amount of inspiration from them. Oh, I love hearing that. Well, Zach, thank you so much. It was great talking to you. It was great to watch this, this cut and your vision of this movie. It was, it was such a treat to watch this. So thank you very much for releasing and taking the time. I appreciate it. Of course, of course. A pleasure. Uh, thank you. Thank you, St. Paul. Deborah, it is really great talking today. I really love this new cut of the film. It gave me a new appreciation and love and uh, for these characters. In, and I saw them all in a kind of a brand new and beautiful light. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Now, what went through your head as you started to see this kind of fan movement grow online to release the Snyder Cut? Well, I never thought we'd end up where we are today. That's for sure. But um, it was really interesting because it started bubbling up like under the surface and and then it grew and grew. And, you know, what started as, um, you know, bus stations and Comic-Con then grew to airplanes flying over Warner Brothers. And then it was like the jumbotron in Times Square. And I was like, oh my goodness, these fans have really like put so much effort and, and raised so much money for this cause. I think what struck me also is the fact that every dollar that they raised, they donated half of it for um, to AFSP um, for suicide prevention and mental health awareness, which, you know, on a personal note, just, you know, was so heartfelt and 
Um, we just couldn't believe that they took a cause that was near and dear to us and really amplified it and, and really was like creating a lot of awareness for, you know, a cause that is oftentimes in the dark. So those two things were happening on like this parallel path. And it, it just, it seemed um, just unbelievable. And, and also unbelievable that they got a big corporation like Warner Media to take notice um, and then, you know, I remember getting the call at like 630 in the morning, one morning from our agent who, who got the call and said, would you, would you guys be interested in putting, you know, your cut on HBO max? And we were like, what? Like, it's still, you know, it, it was unbelievable. And, um, and then kind of began the journey to figure out like how to do that, what that meant, what that cost, can we get it done in the time frame that they wanted and then, you know, getting the team together again to put it all together. I love hearing all of that, especially the charity component. I think I really didn't know that, or I don't think a lot of other people knew that. Now, you did all of this during the pandemic, during, a, you know, how, what was that process like to adhere to COVID protocols? In a way, it, it's interesting, because in a way, the pandemic, I think, helped get the movie made because there was a lack of content. Um, and, you know, streaming services need content. Um, and also, you know, I remember we had pitched it and HBO Max, you know, really wanted to do it. And then when the pandemic hit, they said, well, I guess that's that. And I said, no, 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 no. This is actually the best time because a lot of the visual effects vendors and they employ hundreds of people, the movies that they were working on had gone down because they, you know, they, everything had shut down. But I said, you know, we can work virtually so we could get these people and keep them employed. And now they actually have room to do the work. They have artists that are available that wouldn't have been available before. So it was really this perfect storm, I think, of the timing and the availability of the vendors that we needed to work on it that made it happen. Um, and it, it was interesting, you know, because like we scored the movie in England and I had my iPad and we could listen in you know, on this live stream and hear the music being done. And like the musicians couldn't all be in the same room at the same time, you know, due to the COVID protocols. So like there were things like that that made it tricky, but it's very, once you get it set up and systems in place, like we, our editor worked from her house and actually right behind me is where we edited the movie and they would, and we'd have a phone where she'd be on the phone and Zach would talk to her on the phone and she could control the Avid from where she was. So it was, I think it's going to change actually how we work from now on, because, you know, I know before everyone had to be in the same place and now we can work in this virtual landscape and, and that gives us access to artists all around the world that it opens up a lot of new opportunities. I love that. I mean, I love how you pivoted. This is an incredible film. I think HBO Max is perfect for it. Thank you for the time today. Thank you for putting the time to put this film together. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.